Let me say good morning. Let me say you're watching history's longest running talk show. This one, every time that we go on the air, we set a new record. And uh, I guess we've got a record for having certain guests that come back over and over again. Where do you start? Captain Lou Albano, uh, Bob Hope, Billy Crystal, Sally Kirkland, Milton Berle, and a uh, lady that uh, drops down here whenever she's got a new video to show. Her name was Phoebe Legere. Phoebe's one of my favorite, uh, what you call, sultry type or dynamic type or outrageous type guests. And she is getting what they call enormous press with her new video. And I've got a lady named Debbie Rashon. Debbie Rashon, who's a, uh, a, a journalist who's writing an article for her magazine about uh, Phoebe Legere. We've got Anne-Marie Offer, who's got her own offering, her own TV show. Got Donna Groom, who sings the oldies. Got Aaron Banks, Mr. Martial Arts. Got me with what we call our nostalgic moments. I thought it might be fun to show you the way they uh, advertised movies on old-time picture postcards. Douglas Fairbanks, senior in The Thief of Baghdad. One of our uh, frequent guests is also Milton Berle, and he was once called The Thief of Bad Gags. But he's not. He tells good gags. A brief time out, then we carry on with what I promised you was going to be a show of shows built around some very glamorous femme fatale. Oh, I think maybe the femme fatale phrase, we, we played it up last time. The femme fatale phrase is maybe kind of laughable in today's day and age when I don't think women want to be uh, defined or, uh, uh, you know, sort of described as objects. We'll find out what that's all about following these words. Let's watch closely. Be right back. Illegal. That is truly good whiskey. You want to buy some? Profitable. It's a gold mine up there. Deadly. They're buying from someone else. When it comes to liquor, Capone will kill to protect his interests. Do it real ugly. Brooklyn style. Somebody wanted to send a real message with this. But how far will bootleggers go to protect their own? He's going to try to kill Al Capone. Monday at 9 on Channel 9. When you need second mortgage money, there's only one phrase you need to hear. That's some good news. Your loan's been approved. You need it fast, with a monthly payment that leaves you cash to spare. I've got great news. Your loan was approved. That's great. Call Personal Mortgage Corporation today and find out about our rates, whether you have good credit or even if you've had credit problems in the past. Call 1-800-DIAL-PMC right now. Personal Mortgage Corporation. When it comes to second mortgages, we approve. At Champion, we have the best trained employees and loan officers in the business. They'll put you at ease and take the time to walk you through the second mortgage process step by step. And they'll show you how to replace those high interest credit card debts and other bills with one low monthly payment. And they'll show you how a home equity loan from Champion can save you hundreds of dollars a month. And most importantly, our employees will show you the kind of respect and concern you deserve. When your bank says no, Champion says yes. Everything. Because Room Plus is having a spectacular Memorial Week sale. Save on all the great Room Plus designs in any color or style. You get free professional design service, the finest quality Mica Master bedrooms and children's rooms. And you'll save, save, save during Memorial Week at Room Plus. For information, call 1 800 262 Room. tabloid uh, TV, who needs scandal TV? We need legs and bodies and faces like this, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go home now and watch the show. Great. Let, me, let me say that uh, I'm here with the Andrew sisters. No, it's not the Andrew sisters. <laughs> I'm here. Let me start over there by saying a young lady named Anne Marie Offer, who's got right. a TV show called what? Something to Offer. It's on Channel 17. It's on Sunday at noon and Tuesday at 9 a.m. in the morning. And I was on your show, and I got a big reception, big reaction. Yes, it was wonderful. I was so honored. And I also have had your director on Bob recently, Diamond. Bob Diamond, which is really great. He's he a wonderful. diamond of a gentleman, right? Certainly is. And every, yeah. every time I bump into Anne Marie in the street, she says to me, Joe, suggest some good guests for her. Definitely. And you're going to meet a couple of good And you'll be my anchor person today. What, what kind of, what, what does your audience mostly clamor for? What does your audience seem to ask for more of on your show, Anne Marie? Oh. 
my show is about people going after their dreams, so I think whenever somebody's on that can help them get ahead, they want more of that kind of information, you know, directors, writers, or somebody, you know, some people have interest in, in concerns about the world. Somebody wrote me recently about somebody who was on talking about a new serum for AIDS, so it's, it's a mixed variety of what people want. But my most impressive thing was somebody wrote me and said, that they really felt from watching the show that they were doing the right thing with their life and they knew um, that this show encouraged them to keep going. They had just come in from San Francisco to work on their career, whatever it was, they didn't tell me. Debbie, Debbie, are you, uh, Debbie Rachon, are you a combination of some of the things? And I know Anne-Marie just mentioned uh, director, actress, and uh, you're... All of those things, including writer. Right. I direct, I've directed off-Broadway. I'm in a show right now that's on Theater Row at the Nat Horn Theater with uh, Love Creek Productions. It's um, a one-act festival, and uh, I write for Femme Fatale magazine. Debbie was here about a month or two or three ago with her magazine called Femme Fatale. She writes articles, and uh, we spoke about Theta Barra, the vamp. And mm -hmm. What do you think happened? Somebody actually uh, painted a tie, <laughs> or silk screened, silk screened a tie with Theta Barra, the vamp, on there. What about that, Phoebe Lachere? Would you say that uh, our audience pays attention? You're getting my attention. <laughs> <laughs> Phoebe Leger. Now listen, why don't you, Debbie, uh, I mean, you, you, you try to get Phoebe onto your show, right? Uh, sure. Why don't you, Debbie, do an article about Phoebe for Femme Fatale? I, I would love to. Our, our, our readers would love a, an article on Phoebe Leger. Let's start a press conference now. No, I'm mm -hmm. reading here in the New York Times, the man says that uh, Phoebe Leger is a spoof within a spoof, putting the whole world on. Now, let's say that somebody, you know, somebody, let's say when they're watching you at the, at the ballroom or, or somewhere, that they want to see something with a deeper meaning. Do you, do, you, do you think you have something where it's not a spoof, maybe you have something where it's, uh, which we call, with a hidden deeper meaning and not, not fun, not outrageous or dynamic or whatever? Well, not fun, that would be impossible for me because I love fun so much. I love pleasure. I think that's what it's all about, pleasure and joy and music and, and, uh, but uh, this new show that I'm going to be doing at the Ritz, on Memorial Day weekend and uh, then the show afterwards starting June 15th at the ballroom and this record uh, Memorial Day incidentally has just gone away so I just want you to know that what we're talking about now will be the middle of June right in the middle of June I'm going to be at the ballroom and I'm going to be doing a show called the real Phoebe Leger and I'm going to try to reveal with the greatest transparency that I can, what is really going on inside me with all the honesty and sincerity that I can. Because This captivating young lady, <laughs> this lady of sexy demeanor named Phoebe Leger, I want you to know, she's called the queen of camp or the queen of uh, rocking and shocking. She's really a classically trained musician. She's a Vassar graduate. She's a former debutante. Even though uh, I don't like that word image or the word category, I think that... Uh, uh, you, you sort of combine, uh, I mean, your image would be combining the erotic, what I've seen on, on some of the TV shows, with, with, the, with the intellectual. You're probably, uh, another, you know, the critics, you don't know, they don't know how to take you seriously, and I, th I think you like it that way when nobody can take you seriously. Is that part of your, uh, uh, your persona, that nobody knows what, what's for real and what's not for real with Phoebe, right? It's, uh, well, I think it's all pretty real. I, um, I, you know, I'm a human being right. with real emotions and uh, a real history. And I think that the press does tend to give a kind of reductive uh, assignment of meaning or Here, of category to women and right. to artists Here's to make about, it easy for themselves. Here's about one, one month's publicity for Phoebe. On every, every front page of every newspaper is Phoebe, uh, active Phoebe, and uh, fan flips for fab Phoebe, and all down the line. Bombshell with a mission. What, what's, what's the mission? What's the mission? I think that the mission is to try to uncover what uh, the meaning of woman is in our society. And that a woman can be beautiful, a woman can enjoy decorating herself, a woman can enjoy men and women, uh, but that a woman can also uh, appreciate the, as you say, deeper meaning, the, the spirituality, the would love you, would, that life is really all about. Would you call Madonna a form of uh, what we call uh, a femme fatale, past or present? I mean, with sort of maneuvering men, 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 you know, crawling on their feet to somebody like Madonna, what's... Uh, <laughs> I don't know how to, how to analyze that. I like her very much. She's a very close friend. We're analyzing uh, the femme fatales of the past and present. What's your, what's your feeling here, Miss Debbie Rachon? You famous uh, writer, you? Actress, yes. writer? I think um, Phoebe has it exactly 
right as far as how the magazine feels. Women should be in control of their sexuality and who they are in their career. And this is what this magazine does. It, it showcases women in a positive light within how they want to present themselves in control of their own sexuality and their own uh, business. And, and I think it's great. I think Phoebe's great and, what'll and be, uh, what'll, what'll she's be, perfect for the magazine. What'll be the crux of your story? What'll be sort of the hook? What, what, um, what are you going to say about Phoebe? Well, I think I would have to speak to her first. It would have to be a collaboration, how she would feel. I am a fan of Phoebe. So, uh, Anne Marie, what do you want to say about the young lady? What do you ask her say of what we're sort of analyzing here today? What we're analyzing here? Well, my question is um, kind of twofold. I appreciate the desire to have women really appreciate themselves as women and whatever they do, but I also wonder, if women are beautiful, and both of you are very beautiful, and you also can present yourself in a certain way, but I really hope that we don't slight women that don't look like you and that don't choose to be like, you know, there's beautiful housewives, there's beautiful all that stuff, and I wanted to ask you all how you feel about that because some people can't be this, you know, not that they, you know, should have to be, but some things now, television, commercials, everything, points up, you know, you gotta look this way, have these, have whatever, and it just doesn't happen that way for everybody, and each person is beautiful, I think, in well, their Well, this own young way. lady does get a lot of attention lately, more, uh, you're on the right track when you say that, uh, Phoebe gets a lot of attention more and more than ever before, but not for, uh, she gets it more for her obvious, uh, endowments than for her, uh, the fact that you would like to be a committed musician, right? No, Maybe, she's very talented. Yeah, you get, you get more, more for the uh, oddball, for the uh, outrageous, more than the, that you're a dedicated, classically trained musician. Yes or no? <laughs> <laughs> I want to go back to the housewives. All right. Can I go back to that? Back to the housewives. Because I love the housewives, but I think that they can be beautiful and that every woman should feel sexy. Everyone has the right yeah, to feel beautiful and sexy. And we do have a terrible trouble with the media using women to attract attention to products. To sell, to sell. Mm -hmm. uh, but that doesn't mean that women are bad. That just means that the greed that motivates the use of women, the objectification of women, right, exactly. is bad. So let's not put it on women. And I think everyone can be beautiful in Africa, in fact, where I've traveled several times. They don't believe in such a thing as a beautiful woman. They say it's a woman's clothes who make her that make her beautiful. Now, you can't tell how endowed I am or not. I don't think you can see my breasts, can you? I mean, I can see this, which I love. Thank but you. But I don't happen to be displaying that right now. What, you, what I think you see is four or five necklaces, mm -hmm. ruffles, vest. So I don't know what you're talking but about, Adama, unless you saw me in my dressing room. But before, your you no, your <laughs> some, some of your various attributes are, are displayed in some of these uh, paintings here, some of these photographs, right? So you can't... Uh, well, I it. also think, though, Joe, yeah. as far as the housewife goes, I think she shouldn't fall into a stereotype and think that she can't dress a certain way just because she doesn't have certain measurements. I think they should dress, they should express their sexuality and not think they can't and not be afraid of their sexuality, too. This is what Hugh Hef Hefner discovered, was that you could take any woman and with the right lighting and with the right decoration, she can be gorgeous. Hmm. Nobody should limit their own potential. Right. We can all look terrific and feel good. How about taking off the glasses once? We see the real Phoebe. <laughs> One time I asked Robert Mitchum to do that, and he wouldn't do it. But he finally did it. Robert Mitchum. Nice You're the second one that I ever asked in my whole life to take the glasses off on TV. Let's go into the intermission of a little bit of one of Phoebe's new videos. This is launching her new uh, CD. You're going to write about this in the magazine? You're going to give it a Definitely. good review? Mm -hmm. You're going to play it on your TV show? Uh, sure. <laughs> like the way I talk to, uh, tell these people <laughs> what they're going to do, right? <laughs> with the whip, with the chains. I love you, Joe. L I love you more. <laughs> a little bit of Phoebe on her brand new... Uh, brand new uh, video and CD and cassette and it goes something like this then on with what we promised you was going to be a show of shows. Stay here.
Mel Gibson, Danny Glover, partners in the fight against hunger. Hunger is a lethal weapon. It kills 60,000 people worldwide every day. 40,000 of them are children under five. That's more than 20 million people each year. Oxfam America is working to save lives around the world by funding long-term solutions to hunger, solutions that work. We give people what they need to feed themselves, to prevent illness, to teach their children, to start small businesses, to build a future. You see, hungry people don't need our sympathy. They need our support, and we need yours. Hunger is a lethal weapon. And it should be banned, right? That's right, it should be banned. Ban this lethal weapon. Join Oxfam America and help plant the seeds of change. It's been one month since Louisa Price gave birth, and her baby still fights for his life. Uh, until yesterday, was already stabilized. You'll never know if you did all the right things to have a healthy baby, unless you see a doctor when you're pregnant. If you're pregnant, don't wait to see a doctor. New Jersey taxpayers aren't getting their money's worth from the school system Jim Florio built. New Jersey once had the best schools in the nation. We can again. We must have change. Change that shows respect for your dollars and your thoughts. That means taking the politics out of education. It means basic curriculum standards that allow our students to compete in the high-tech 21st century with a greater emphasis on math, science, reading, and writing. We're sitting here alongside uh, Mr. Martial Arts. You know, when it comes to martial arts, I'm, I'm thrown for a loss. I'm only kidding, but I, I, can't, uh, I can't tell you how excited I am to know that, that uh, Mr. Aaron Banks is casting and starring in a forthcoming movie. And if he wants a good leading lady, you got four choices, right, Aaron? <laughs> I, I can't miss it. You do your own stunts? You do huh? your own stunts? You, run, you do your own stunts? Oh, yeah, sure. A Aaron is on stunts. almost as many magazine covers as uh, any of our people. And uh, Aaron, I want you to meet uh, Anne Marie Offer. Hi. Got her own TV talk show. Uh, that's a nice. Debbie Rashon writes for. Uh, Hi, I get a real kick meeting you. <laughs> Femme Fatale. <laughs> that, Sorry, that was, I had to do that. That was a great. What, what was the name of the song we played? Uh, Phoebe? Made for you. It's the opening cut on the album. And here is Donna Groom, according to my good friend Mickey O'Keefe. Not only does Donna sing with the Skyliners and pack them in. Madison Square Garden. Where else do you do this? Uh, Radio City. Radio City. But now you got uh, a dual career, right? Mm -hmm. it's, uh... I've had for quite a while. Um, right now, I've just been doing a lot of writing, recording, more. I would say in the pop country vein. It seems to be uh, where the market is right now. And I've never really been pigeonholed into one particular uh, type of music. And it seems to be working out really well. I've got the, a lot of but, interest. But the oldies era is still very compelling, very magnetic to a lot oh, of people. Oh yeah, right? oh yeah. I think uh, people of that era want to preserve their um, good times as long as they can, because that was a good time. But are the, are the fans who come there are they tolerant of what they? I mean, they just want classical medleys, or, or would they would they go along for something new and exciting and modern at the same time? Uh, no, I think they like to keep it in the uh, the oldies vein. I think they like to stay that way. You like the oldies, Phoebe? You like some of the... Uh, oh, you know, I love the old tunes, Joe. Some of the harmony groups? Oh, I love it. Mm -hmm. Debbie? Oh, there's nothing like them. They're all coming back again. They are. You do a little nostalgia on your program once in a while, Anne Marie? Once in a while, I have some people on that do the old stuff and the new stuff, and it's interesting how the kids have taken some of the old nostalgia and worked it into the new sounds. A little nostalgia and neuralgia, right? Yeah, I wanna, <laughs> neuralgia. I want to do a sampling of... Uh, did you like uh, Phoebe's song? It's terrific. So Phoebe, it's more than terrific. It's, it's real wonderful. smooth. Yeah. It's wonderful. Smooth. I like that. Beautiful. We're going to get a sampling of your music in about a minute. Then we're okay. going to get to our panel. And everybody's yelling for a sample of trivia. We'll do some trivia. Aaron, okay. when is the next big event? We all want to go in there and watch some karate, right? You like yeah, I want to learn some self-defense. Right. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to fight with them, though, right? No. <laughs> Forget about it. Invite us in. Yeah. It's, uh, well, we're going to Yonkers Raceway, and the, uh, they've got the Westchester Fair, the uh, big fair coming up. We've got a lot of shows going to be taking place here. So that's uh, starting May 27th, uh, which runs to about the June the 14th. 
And uh, I got a big surprise for everybody on the Joe Franklin Show. Joe Franklin on June the 18th will be at Yonkers Raceway. Yonkers Raceway, you heard of Yonkers Raceway, mm -hmm. trotters and all. Um, I didn't even going, know this yet. They're <laughs> going to give him a day, a night, Joe Franklin at Yonkers Raceway. It never happened before. And uh, mm -hmm. all his friends, everybody I'm should on, come I'm to see. I'm going to gallop around the track. You mean. In the sulky. <laughs> in the sulky. <laughs> and, yeah, great. give him a nice chance. Yeah. Joe Franklin night. Yonkers Raceway, too. Ladies and gentlemen, I have been getting many, many reports on the work of Donna Groom. Uh, she's being groomed now for all the <laughs> important shows by giving you a sample. Uh, what, what number are we about to hear a little bit of? Do you know? This what? is called There's a Dream Out There with My Name on It. There's a Dream Out There with My Name on It, and if oh. Phoebe likes it, uh, we'll become not only the Andrews sisters, we'll become the, the Mills brothers or whatever, the Inks brothers. A little bit of Donna Groom, a sample of such. <laughs> Honey, do we really need three bedrooms? Your parents can have our room when they visit. Ralph, is the Edsel your grandfather left you considered a gift? Or a liability? Maybe a mobile home would be simpler. Three years ago, I made a film in a severely depressed section of Trenton on behalf of Martin House. I pleaded for volunteers and support to assist poor families in need of help with nowhere to turn. This morning I went back and I saw a changing community. From neglect and desperation to vitality and renewed hope. Thank you, kind people of New Jersey, for helping 72 families go from unlivable conditions to true home ownership for helping hundreds of hardworking people to learn a skill or earn their high school equivalency diplomas, for a new health mission that seeks affordable medical care for the community's mothers, fathers, and children. Yes, we're making progress thanks to Martin House and you, but please, don't stop now. Call Martin House at area code 609-989-8143 and see how you can continue to make a difference. That's area code 609-989-8143. Thank you. Honey, it's Mom. Please let me in. I'm worried. Learn to see the signs of mental illness. Two out of three people who get help get better. For a free booklet, call the National Mental Health Association. I am seated here alongside the sultriest, the sexiest panel in the whole history of any TV show. I'm seated here alongside Theda Barra. That was and my mother. That's your mother, yeah. right? <laughs> my grandmother. And uh, <laughs> I'm seated alongside Donna Groom. Let's each have a final little summary. What do you want to say about uh, any of your uh, final comments, Donna? Well, um, things are looking pretty good. You know, we're always looking for a nice deal. I want to also thank my new writing partner, Linda Marcus. She's a lyricist. And she goes into the studio with me, and I play on all my recordings and uh, arrange them. And Donna Groom yes. and Phoebe, you wrote the song, too, that we played by yes, you, right? Yes, I wrote Made For You. It's the opening cut on my new album, my first album, my debut album on 
Dead Dog or Ripe and Ready Records. It'll be available in the stores from June 1st, and I'm, I'm just thrilled about it. My record company president, Nick Shirelli, is making it all happen for and me. And I'm thrilled to agree with Stuart Troop and Newsday that Phoebe is an audacious original. <laughs> Word from uh, Tracy, I mean from, uh, <laughs> from uh, Debbie, Debbie Rochon. Rochon. Debbie Rochon. Yeah. Buy Femme Fatale magazine. It's a wonderful magazine. Come down to the Nat Horn Theater on Theater Row, Love Creek Productions, and watch out for my next films, which are Regenerated Man and Raven's Inn. And don't trip over that long skirt when you get up. That's <laughs> and uh, Anne Marie Offer, what do you what do you want to offer as your final word? Oh, my final word. I hope everyone will watch something to offer, and I want to thank you for all you've given me and helped me toward pursuing my dream and I want to encourage everyone to go after their dreams and never give up on right anything. To, right to yeah. Donna, your dream is coming true, right? That's right. As long as you wear that nice red dress. <laughs> <laughs> Dreamy. Everybody's <laughs> yelling for a touch of Richie Ornstein and stump the panel that we've got oh, a special gold medal if anybody can answer any of these <laughs> tough, tough questions. I'm sure they can. In the 1961 hit record, Big Bad John, sung by Jimmy Dean, how tall was Big John and how much did he weigh? Come on, five, five feet, 300 pounds. <laughs> no, no, that's a good guess. <laughs> he was six, six foot six, six, weighed 245. Like me. <laughs> Close. <laughs> Name the singing group that was backup for Elvis Presley for most of his hit recordings. Oh, someone has it out there. Jordan there. The Jordan Jordan, Jordan, Jordan there. Is, is correct. <laughs> I'd like to teach the world to sing was a big hit record in 1962 for... Coca-Cola. Coca Cola, they use that record. You're right, partially. <laughs> the New Seekers. That's oh. The New Seekers? Yes. Let's seek these uh, final words and. Uh, well, help me wave bye bye. Oh, that's <laughs> me. <laughs> Ciao. <laughs> I'm a mod.